Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to be discussing the most important things that juniors should know. Now this video is perfect for anyone who's looking to get into iOS development and wants to actually land a role as a junior iOS developer at the start of their career and this video will also go over what you need to know to actually get a job on the market and if you want to know how to find a job then check out my video the complete guide for getting a job in iOS on my channel. Well the first thing that you should actively do and try to know is problem solving. Well, this one might be a surprise to you because it's not really coding related, it's like writing physical code. But this for me is easily one of the most important skills that any programmer should have. This is the ability to solve a problem. Now, watching tutorials are good, but your day-to-day -day tasks as an iOS developer will involve you having to go from point A to B. And a lot of these actions that you're going to need to do aren't really covered in tutorials are actually things that you need to solve for yourself so you need to get into the habit of finding out what the problem is and breaking it down into steps now before starting a task what you want to do is you actually want to write down in plain english what should happen at each step in terms of what you're trying to achieve so let's look at this example briefly so let's say you're given a task to fetch some data from a new API endpoint and you need to load it onto a screen. As you can see on the screen, this is our requirement. Now, the steps involved when actually breaking down this task and the problem is you need to actually, first of all, you want to build the screen according to the design and all of its components. Then you need to create a way to fetch the data from the API. Then you need to create a way to pass the data back to the new screen. And then you need to link the data to the list in the new screen. And then finally, you need to test out the flow. So as you can see, these are really high level but they can actually give you a guide on what you need to actually tackle a task in the future. So get into the habit of just writing down in plain English what it is that you need to do and then translate that into code. Now, another thing you wanna make sure that you're doing as well is you wanna make sure that you're testing your work. So you need to make sure your work actually works. Now, when you're given a task, more than likely you're going to be given something called requirements. If you don't know what requirements are, they're essentially a guide of how a feature should work. Now, when you build a feature, you need to make sure that it follows these requirements. This is why it's so important to make sure that you validate your test and work. This can be manually by running the app on your phone or, or on the simulator and checking to see if the behavior is correct or you could be testing out some specific business logic with unit tests. A good example of this is, let's say you're building an app but you need to apply a discount onto an item. You wanna make sure that the calculated discount price on an item is correct. Now, for situations like this, you'll also wanna, like I said before, make sure that you learn unit testing. And I actually have a video on my channel which has a basic introduction to unit testing to show you why and what it is. Now, you may be thinking, but I've never wrote requirements before. Well, technically, if you ever worked in your own you know, personal projects, or if you try to learn something from one of my videos, or just try to play around in iOS in general, you have. Because when you built something, you said to yourself that it should work like this. This was a requirement for your application. Another thing to also keep in mind is to think outside the box. And when you're writing your code, other possible situations could happen and you want to write code that will actually prevent these scenarios where things could go wrong. Taking your time to test your work and also think about where something could go wrong will help you massively and also help you in terms of reducing your bug count. Like I said before, tutorials are good and great and they're a great resource to learn new things. But even after watching a tutorial, even like mine, you want to make sure that you get into the habit of finding that topic and being able to read the documentation. Now, it might sound really simple, but reading documentation is a key skill that isn't really straightforward and simple. It's something that you'll need to be able to do since you need to be able to read a doc so that when you're given a task, you know how to implement whatever framework or feature it is that you're working on. And a documentation is essentially a source of truth for everything relating to that feature or API that you're working with. Now, try to get into the habit of being able to go to the Apple documentation and read about the framework so that you're comfortable with this in terms of finding out the information that you need. Also, I just want to say that this doesn't mean that you can never Google an answer or go on Stack Overflow because we all do it. But since they're also valid ways to find an answer to a problem. Now, I'll be honest, as a junior, it may be a bit 
Dalton going through the Apple documentation for the first time and seeing all of this code and all of these properties and understanding what it all means. But what you just need to do is just be able to actually take your time and just find out the bits that you're working with. And the more you do it over and over over time, you'll quickly pick up how to use a new framework that's been released and understand where to find that information because you'll be so used to the documentation. So I just said before that you want to get used to reading the documentation. But like I said, this is only one skill for your tool set. You also want to get good at Googling. Now, let's be honest, we've all been there. We've all used Stack Overflow. I use Stack Overflow sometimes myself to help me with problems as even as a lead. And I actually Google how to com solve common problems I'm facing. I remember when I used to build apps in UIKit, I always used to forget how to set the title on a button, that's something I always just use to Google. But something that you should look at improving is your Googling. Now you wanna be able to search for what it is that you're looking for in a specific and clear term on Google. So let's look at an example of this. Let's say we have a view and we're meant to be showing an alert on the screen after a period of time. What you wouldn't want to search for is alert not working. So what you wouldn't want to search for is alert not working. So what's the problem here? Well, first of all, it's not even clear that this is relating to Swift UI and what specifically isn't working. So let's make this search term a bit better. Rather than saying alert not working, why don't we search for Swift UI alert not appearing on state change? See how this term is more specific and clear for the issue that we're looking for. Don't be afraid to Google in your job either. There's things that you just don't know and that's why we have Google. Just make sure that your search terms are specific and clear. Now, when you go into a code base, you may be eager to just jump into the code and just do whatever it is that you want to do. But another great skill to have is the ability to be a chameleon and adapt to different situations. So what do I mean by this? Well, each team actually has their own way of doing things from architecture, design guidelines and processes. The last thing that you want to do is just jump in and start writing code that doesn't follow how the team has been working before you joined. Instead, what you want to do is learn from the team that you're in. Now, some of the things that you want to learn from them is how do they work and what are the processes that you need to follow? What is the architecture of this project? And is there any documentation? And if I have a question, who can I ask? So I want to make sure that I'm following the architecture properly and I want to have any discussions about things that I'm unclear about. A good way to look at it is that you're essentially a new item that will be used to enhance the way the living room feels, not ruin it. So you're not a lava lamp, you're just a nice picture on the wall. <laughs> So you want to be able to slot into the team smoothly, such as being able to read the architecture and follow the principles of it so that they have a consistent code base. Nine times out of 10, companies will use source control. Now, if you don't know what this is, think about it. It's like a place where everyone puts their work in the cloud and you can contribute to it using your machine. So something you'll want to learn is the basics of Git since this is the most common source control that's used. Now, teams will have their own processes and when you start the job, they'll sh they sh well, they should show you how they work. But underneath all of that is the same thing, which is Git. Now, some things that you should know using Git is branching, committing, pushing, and rebasing. Now, there's another iOS content creator on YouTube called Stuart Lynch, who has a great series on Git that you should check out. I'll actually have a link to the video in the description box and also put the thumbnail on the screen now. Remember this, you're a sponge. As a junior, you should have the mindset of trying to learn as much as possible from your peers. Try to soak up as much information as possible from the people around you and don't feel stupid for asking questions. If you don't know what a word means or what something is doing, ask. If anyone makes you feel some kind of way for asking that, then that person shouldn't be around you. A lot of people will give you a big list of all the technical things that you need to learn to be an iOS dev and these lists may be valid, but in actuality, a lot of these lists, you're actually going to learn them on the job anyways. So you only really need to focus on the fundamentals within iOS development. Remember, you don't know what you don't know. In terms of the fundamentals, you need to know, this is my list. So you want to understand how to use Xcode. You need to understand the Swift programming language. You want to understand how to lay out views. Understand at least the MVVM architecture. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description box and a thumbnail on the screen here if you want to know more about that. Understand how to fetch and display data from a source such as an API. Understand how to pass data between views. And for me, 
this is just a high level overview of the topics that I feel that you should know and are key to building any iOS application. Make sure you research these topics, apply them to your own projects and I actually have videos on my channel that cover all these topics too. This is more of a soft skill but you need to be able to communicate with people. This may be being this may be being able to express the issue that you're facing to someone rather than saying to someone, my button isn't working. Okay, specifically, what isn't working and what are you trying to achieve? Let's change that question to, I've added a tap gesture to my button, but when I tap on it, nothing seems to happen. This is much more clear and now I know the issue that you're facing and what we're trying to solve so I can actually help you out better. And then the final point that I just want to focus on is be open. So if you're actually stuck on a problem and don't know what to do, don't become someone who suffers in silence. You're not a one person team. You should always be open about any issues you're facing once you hit that roadblock so that you're not just stuck in the same place. Get used to bouncing ideas off people and talking about the best way to implement things so the team is aware and also so you can learn something new too. Okay, cool. So that's everything in this video. If you have any advice that you would give to someone starting out in iOS development, I'd love to hear it in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.